Okay, we're um, going to get started here. Uh, th um, good morning. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Um, I'm Melanie Kinderdine. I'm the executive director of the uh, MIT Energy Initiative. We're one of the co-hosts of this event. Um, uh, the MIT Energy Initiative is known as MITE on the campus. Um, so when I say MITE, that's what I'm talking about. Thank you for joining us today at the inaugural C3E Women in Clean Energy Symposium, and welcome to MIT. I'm looking forward to today's program. I would like to extend a special thanks to the sponsors of the event. Um, you can see their names are on the uh, coasters on your table. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge the incredible work of the mighty staff, the best staff in the world. Rebecca, yes, great, <laughs> terrific. Thank you. And uh, two uh, former MIT students here today, um, uh, Sarah Wood and Lara Pierpoint, um, they were instrumental in helping us get this organized, and they've been incredible, too. Um, in addition, I'd like to acknowledge the support and counsel of the best boss in the world, uh, Professor Ernest Moniz, the mighty director. He's sitting over here working on his remarks. Um, <laughs> And as well as uh, DOE Undersecretary David Sandalow and Caroline McGregor, both from DOE, and uh, uh, been working with Caroline, and I'm sure many of you have as well on C3E. I've been working with her for some time. Another person here today uh, deserves our thanks, Christina Johnson, the former Undersecretary at DOE. I understand that C3E was her vision, and, and again, thanks to Christina. What a great idea. It's brought us all together uh, here today. Um, one other uh, uh, local uh, not notable person, the mayor of Cambridge, Henrietta Davis, is uh, sitting right here. Henrietta. Thank you. Henrietta has always been interested in, in uh, energy, um, and so uh, it's great to have an event for a woman in energy with the mayor of Cambridge here. And um, finally, a special thanks to South Africa's energy minister, uh, Dipuo Peters, who traveled here from South Africa to give a keynote speech in a few minutes. Um, I've done this trip before. It's a very long one, and we are very grateful she made this journey and that we're going to hear uh, some incredible uh, uh, things that she's doing with C3E. As you know, C3E is a program of the Clean Energy Ministerial. It is designed to advance the careers of women working in clean energy disciplines. C3E is about mentoring, education, networking, and knowledge. Or for those of us who are recovering federal bureaucrats always in search of a new acronym, that spells MINK. And I'm going to say it, I can't help myself. Uh, it's, a, it's a room full of women. This is a mink that even PISA would love. Um, we hope that by the conclusion of today's program, you will have remembered your mentors and know that you too are mentors, that you have enhanced your education, that you will leave here with a new network of friends and contacts, and that you have increased your knowledge of clean energy. There's been a great deal of enthusiasm about this event. Um, there are many, many, uh, it's being webcast. A lot of universities have, uh, are, have uh, events organized to watch this. Um, we have an overflow crowd outside watching on a monitor. Um, I think that the uh, enthusiasm about this event has a, a lot to do with our uh, next speaker that I'm going to introduce, um, uh, Susan Hockfield. Uh, she was MIT's president until July 2nd. Um, she has greatly elevated the role of clean energy on the MIT campus. She's been a major force in marshalling the talents of both women and men at MIT to help us help transform how we produce, transport, and consume energy around the world. For me and for many, Susan is a mentor, role model, and visionary who pursued energy at MIT with a tenacity that is needed to help us meet, to meet global energy challenges. Please join me in welcoming President Susan Hockfield. Welcome, everyone. It's exciting to be here this morning. I'm delighted to see all of you. Um, it's, uh, I would say this is my first official role as in, in my unofficial capacity. Um, I'm telling people I'm about halfway through rehab at this point. Um, it's an exhilarating place, MIT, and the Energy Initiative really contributed hugely to uh, just the excitement and um, mobilization of the campus over these last 
uh, seven years or so. I want to thank uh, DOE and Mighty for hosting this symposium today. And I want to thank uh, DOE and Mighty for the vision they had in putting together uh, C3E. I particularly also want to thank Melanie and uh, Melanie's best boss in the world, Ernie Moniz. Um, the enthusiasm and the ambition they put behind putting this together I w is just incredible, so we owe them huge thanks. Um, and also, I want to just take this moment to thank Melanie and Ernie, but also uh, Bob Armstrong, the Deputy Director of MITEI. Um, I get far too much credit for the MIT Energy Initiative. Um, I played a little bit of a role, but the major role and the real heavy lifting was done by um, the three of them. And it has been um, simply uh, a, a, transfer a transformational uh, kind of activity here on the MIT campus. Um, the idea was brought to me. Uh, early on in my presidency, actually it was probably only a few weeks after I began, which is now almost eight years ago, and the enthusiasm as I walked around campus, it was um, quite astonishing. As I asked people at MIT what their sense of MIT's responsibilities and ambitions for the next decade or two, as I was just beginning to learn about the MIT community, you know, I've been in academic worlds for um, basically my whole life, and um, thinking about the thousand or so MIT faculty and what I would learn when I asked that question, in my own mind I was thinking, well, I'll probably get 5,000 ideas about where MIT should go. But instead of that, I heard again and again from faculty, from students, from staff, from alumni, the incredible importance of MIT really putting its weight behind bending the curve on building a new uh, sustainable energy future. Um, the call was so great and uh, it seemed to me that there was nothing we could do but pull together MIT's you know, vast resources, vast human resources to try and um, make a change in this important area. So I am not going to you know, go through the facts of, uh, you know, that persuaded me and have not yet persuaded others that this is the most important challenge for this generation. It's figuring out how to build a sustainable energy future for the planet. Uh, and I know there will be other people who are experts in areas who will tell you uh, the facts that, again, you probably all really know. So uh, seven and a half years ago or so, we started working on the Energy Initiative. Ernie and Bob Armstrong co-chaired the Energy Research Council. And they spent, I would say, close to a year and a half figuring out how to frame energy work here at MIT and frame it in a way that MIT could play its own kind of idiosyncratic role. The framing that uh, Ernie and Bob presented uh, to me and the then provost, now president, Raphael Reif, was to do an initiative that obviously embraced research, that also um, paid important attention to education, and in addition, really worked hard on policy. So coming out of a really more curiosity-driven kind of approach to, uh, to science and research, um, I was very impressed when I first got to MIT about the idea of turning ideas into action. And one of the first lessons I learned was that great technology will never win. Great technology alone. Great technology win alone wins if it's paired with great policy. And so the policy arm of the Energy Initiative has been very important. Uh, in typical MIT fa fashion, over these last uh, seven and a half years, we've done a huge amount around uh, tech transfer, and importantly, build extraordinarily strong alliances with industry partners. Um, I view that as a model for research universities and research everywhere in the world. The incredibly important uh, convergence bringing together both policy and technology, uh, government, industry, and the academy. Um, Mighty has been an astonishing success. They've raised a huge amount of money. They, we have raised a huge amount of money, mostly from our industry partners. But I would say the most exciting thing is the mobilization of the MIT community and beyond. Um, as I said, it was truly a transformative uh, function here at MIT. Clearly, we had the right problem, we had the right place, and hit it just at the right time. Uh, in my mind, the efforts of Mighty are designed to deliver real results for the real world. And um, our success over these years make MIT a natural place to host uh, this symposium. Uh, you all know that the purpose of um, C3E is to empower 
and um, advance the careers and leadership of women in clean energy. And you know, when I look, I mean, what a fabulous audience. But you know, mostly when I talk to energy audiences, um, the proportion is inverse, men to women, uh, than what it is today. And it has puzzled me. I think it's critically important that women play a significant role in energy. The first reason is very simple. If uh, we're going to tackle one of the most challenging problems that the globe has faced, I don't think we're going to be able to get very good progress if we've eliminated half of the people who might participate just at the outset. We won't be able to move fast enough if we leave out half the population. We aren't going to be able to design solutions well enough. So beyond that, one of the things that has frustrated me, and I'm delighted for this initiative because I'm hoping we can you know, build the force of women inside uh, the purpose of uh, creating a sustainable energy future, is that for me, it seems like a natural thing. It is a world where, of course, there's fabulous technology, Women and men develop fabulous technology, and you'll be hearing from some women who have participated in that. Um, but it is a problem with an incredibly important purpose. It will touch the lives of everyone on the globe. And it's a, probably, I can't think of a better example of a place where we really want to turn ideas into action. And in my experience, you know, women are awfully good at turning ideas into action. Um, and I just, you know, wish that we could design ways to get more women involved. Building mentors, uh, supporting mentors, and making everyone understand that you, know, you are all mentors as well as mentees um, is a critical part of building a community that's receptive and supportive of women. Uh, let me just close by kind of telling you my feelings about uh, the energy efforts. It is a wonderful problem. The threat of climate change is daunting. The threat of the deniers of climate change is daunting. But this is a problem that has solutions, and we will find those solutions. And despite the vagaries of uh, the enthusiasms, let's say, of our country, uh, people in each of our countries, I really believe that we can pull together to make a significant change on the energy equation really, really fast. So I want to thank you all for your commitment to energy. I want to thank you for coming to this symposium. And um, I want to thank you for the roles that you all have played and will play in building a sustainable energy future for the planet. Thanks very much.